Okay, and we are live, hopefully, uh, on uh, Facebook here. We are at our training centre in Manchester. Um, so welcome to another Hilti Live episode. Uh, my name is Dean Murphy. I'm uh, one of the product managers here at Hilti. I cover the cordless tools, and uh, we're going to have a cordless special today for you. So we're going to have a look at some different categories of tools. We're going to give it a few seconds to see if many more people to join us. I'm looking at the numbers now in the thousands. So all the welcomes to the party. Uh, so remember guys this is 100 percent interactive uh, so anything goes we'll answer any questions or comments that you put through. Um, if you've got any if we don't get time then we will of course answer them once we've finished. So I think we should get started. Seconds of this here. Okay, good stuff. Right, so as I say, welcome. Uh, really good to have you along for another Hilti Live. Um, we're going to look at three categories of cordless tools today. So, um, for, for Eagle Eye viewers, those of you who've seen these kind of things before, we've got drill drivers. We've covered these on previous Hilti Lives. Um, so, we'll do a quick, quick recap on our uh, two drill drivers we've got there. We're then going to have a look at rotary hammers. So here we've got the T2, the T4, and the T6. The T4's got this fancy thing on the end of it, uh, which I'll explain and show you what that is later on. And then we're gonna have a final look at the other kind of core category of tool, okay, which is, let's say, cutting tool, in this case, angle grinders. We've got a lot of questions um, about angle grinders, so we'll hopefully answer a couple of those as we go along. So, and with that in mind, as I say, guys, please feel free to comment, ask questions, and we'll try and do them either as we go along or at the end. We have been asking for your questions all week as well on the, the other social channels that we have, um, so we've got a few already locked in ready, ready. So, recap on the drill drivers, perhaps. So, you see in front of us here, we have the SF4 and we have the SF6. Um, SF, dear viewers, stands for screw fastening. Um, and as you can probably tell, visually, some slight differences. Um, the SF4 is the newest uh, drill driver that we do. This is a nice, light, compact, it's ergonomically very friendly. So if you're working overhead, if you're working in tight spaces, um, this is still a remarkably powerful drill driver for, for such essentially a compact tool. So if you're doing you know, light duty applications throughout the day, um, you know, tight spaces, you want a light tool, it's easy to use, SF4 is one for you. SF6, um, as you can tell, slightly bigger, more powerful, um, same mechanisms, same functionality, um, major difference, this has a hammer function on it. So if you're doing anything drilling into, you want to do a bit of drilling into masonry or some brickwork, or you generally want a more powerful drill driver, uh, more bang for your buck essentially, then the SF6 is the one for you. So just a quick recap really there on um, the dual drivers because we haven't covered them before. Um, so screw fastening tools from Hilti, there you go. Right, category number two. And, and, and again, a tool we get a lot of questions about and, and indeed this week we've had a couple come through so we'll, we'll try and take some. Rotary hammers, um, we've chosen these because you guys will probably use these on an almost daily basis. So what do we have in front of us? Uh, T2, T4, and the T6, and the number one question, guys, that we get asked is, you know, how do I know which one I need, right? And you'll notice a theme today, which is which is choice. Right? Um, so I'll give you a quick rule of thumb you can apply, make things nice and easy. T2, uh, go off the numbers: two, 12 mil, four, 14 mil, six, 16 mil holes. That's not an exact science, guys, but it's a rough rule of thumb that you can apply. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a difference in the style of the tools, and, 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 and ignore the, the, the fancy thing on the end here, I'll explain all. T2 is a pistol style tool, okay? So it's designed for you to hold it on the back like that, side handle here. If you're doing six milli holes, if you're doing some plugging, you know, if you're, I don't know, you may be an electrician, or you work in the mechanical trade, or you're drilling into masonry a few times a day, six milli, eight milli, um, the T2 is a great compact rotary hammer for you to use. You'll notice as well, all on 22 volt. 
Where it gets more interesting is moving up into the four and the six. So the six is the king. Yeah, the six is the most powerful rotary hammer that we do. Um, you'll notice that both the four and the six have this D-shaped handle on them. Yeah, that's a slightly different um, hammering mechanism than the two that we've just seen. Um, the six is, the, uh, as I say, the most powerful and also has chiseling function on it. So this will handle 16 mil, 18 mil holes, no problem. Um, its optimum range will be in the 14 to, to 16 range. And then you've got the T4, which is the middle of the range. This is the workhorse rotary hammer, okay? So if you're drilling eight mil, 10 mil, 12 mil holes, concrete, masonry, block work, the T4 is the, the one for you. But remember, the six has the chiseling function. So if you're doing a bit of, I don't know, tile removal or you're getting rid of some, some epoxy or some resin or whatever, uh, you might wanna consider the six if you want the most powerful um, rotary that we do. Let's have a look at them in action, um, and I'm going to explain what the DRS system is. So we're going to be PP'd up, guys, so we've got some ear protection on, and some goggles. So, uh, we've got a 14mm uh, drill bit in the tool. Let's show you the T6 first, and we're just going to drill into this concrete. Um, let's have a look how it handles a, a, a fairly large diameter hole. <laughs> see that that was pretty quick right for, for what is quite a large diameter hole bit of dust generated there but that's okay now let's have a look at the same hole drilled uh, but with the T4 with the dust removal system on the end see right the difference there the dust created here um, with the dust removal system on that's going to take that it draws a little bit of power from the battery and um, is going to take that dust away as you drill something I would really recommend if you're working indoors not, not only for the dust removal but also it's going to make the drilling a little bit more efficient as well because it's taking the dust out as you go along so um, have a look at that guys if you're interested reach out to us we can uh, we can show you more on the dust removal system so to kind of recap, a couple of questions we had this week. Um, the first was on the drill bits, right? Now, we've used, show you. Um, these are standard drill bits, TC drill bits, okay? So universal um, drill bits you can use with any rotary hammer. But if you look at the ends of them, um, this is a TCX drill bit from Hilte, and you'll notice that it's got an X shape on the end. Um, that's designed for if you hit any rebar, believe it or not, that drill bit will actually chip away at the rebar and carry on working. You can also have just a standard drill bit as well, um, you know, if, if that's uh, not, not something that you need, um, a normal TC drill bit will work as well. Also, what could be interesting for you to know is that uh, we will actually warranty these drill bits, the TCX drill bits, so if that breaks and we can still see the wear indicator on it, um, we're gonna go ahead and give you a, a replacement drill bit. So you know, something to consider as well. The, the, you'd be amazed at the influence a good quality drill bit can have, regardless of the tool that we're using, okay? So, you know, if you're going to invest in a rotary hammer, um, you know, please make sure you also invest in some decent drill bits as well at the same time. The other question we've had this week that came through on, on one of the other social channels was around the batteries on the tool. And specifically, does that have an influence on the performance? And the short answer is no. Um, the main difference with the batteries is the, essentially the reach, the number of holes that you're gonna be able to drill before you need to recharge that battery. So you can see here, we've had, uh, we've had a 5.2 amp battery, we've got a four amp on the T2 here, and a nice, um, again, simple way that you guys can, um, can calculate the reach in an easy to do way is take the voltage and times it by the ampage. So take 22 volt, which is all our cordless tools here, and times it by the ampage. That's going to give you your watt hours, essentially, um, how much power, how much energy, I should say, that that battery is going to produce for you. All the batteries can be used with the tools. 
Um, we would probably recommend going with a 5.2 or an 8 with the rotaries because they do take a bit of juice if you want to get the most uh, holes drilled. But again, you guys choose the battery that you need. Yeah. If a three, uh, if a four or a five is what you need, then 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 you go for it. So in summary, TE2, nice and light, compact, six eight milli holes, drilling some plugs, still a remarkably good and powerful tool for the price and for the weight. T4, your workhorse, yeah? This will do a bit of everything. This will cover eight, 10, 12, 14 mil holes, no problem. Optional dust removal system, um, different designs to the T2. And then you've got the T6, the most powerful, the most bang for your buck. Also, by the way, the T6 does have a dust removal system as well. Um, so something to consider if you're doing, you know, Anchor setting 10 mil, 12 mil, 14 mil, 16 mil, 18 mil holes, um, you know, serial applications, maybe the T6 is the one for you. So that's the rotary hammers uh, done. Last but not least, I want us to have a look at angle grinders, and, and we've got two to show you. Yeah? Um, we've got here the AG125, and we have here the AG4. So the AG4 is our newest um, angle grinder. That's a couple of years old now. Um, so visually, what can we see? Th there's some differences, right? The AG4 has got a slimmer grip, for starters. It's also got a side switch and a speed dial, which we'll come back to in just a second. The AG125 has got what we call a dead man switch or a paddle switch, okay? The number one question we get asked is, again, similar to the rotaries, how do I know which one I need? To keep it really, really simple for you, then the AG125 with the dead man switch, use on site. Because if you release that trigger, that's got a fast brake, a disc brake that's going to kick in, it's going to stop that blade really, really quickly. The AG4 is your workshop tool. Why is it a workshop tool? Because if I'm working in a workshop environment, I'm typically working for longer periods of time, I'm going to want the on and off switch. Yeah, because I'm not going to want to pull that paddle switch for long periods of time. Also, speed dial. Really important if you're working with finer metals, with stainless steel. Um, you can see we've got a flat disc fitted on this as well. So if you're doing any polishing applications, cleaning out welds, you might want a bit more control. Hence why we do a version with a speed dial. So it really is dealer's choice. Yeah? Do you want the tool with the dead man switch, with the fast brake? which is maybe more for sight, or do you want the tool with the side switch, with the speed dial, with a slimmer, kind of more ergonomically friendly grip, and we go with the AG4. Shall we have a look at them? Uh, let's do that. Um, safety first, we get rid of the high disc, because that's loose clothing, and I know what you're all thinking. Where can I buy one of those fancy aprons, Dee? Um, we'll, we'll tell you where at some point in the future. So, um, we've got this fitted with a flat disc. Um, anyone that's ever used grinders will be kind of familiar with that. We're going to use our PPE again to make a little bit of noise. So, we've got some steel guys. Um, let's, have a, let's have a look at it. Let's mess around with the speed and show you. So, always remember to have the guard in a place that stops the sparks from getting as close as it can to you. And we've got this on a medium speed setting. We're just going to look out or polish some of the steel here. Even the angle that we work at has an implication. We can then put the speed up. We could do some chamfering on the end. Now, again, really is up to yourselves um, you know what tool is more useful for you the AG4 we really see as more of a workshop tool now the AG125 has got a slightly more power than the um, AG4 ever so slightly so you're going to get kind of more corded, corded performance from this um, than you would with the AG4 but not you know the, the difference isn't huge so let's have a look at this we're going to cut some rebar uh, I think we've got uh, eight, maybe ten milli rebar here. 
Uh, we've got a standard cutting disc on the AG125. And remember our paddle switch here. So short, sharp bursts of activity. And we're just going to take a couple of trims off. Let the disc do the work, nice and in control, start to in the body. And you want to be rotating that disc a little bit. If you don't rotate the disc, that's where you'll get the discolouring from um, putting too much pressure. You'll wear your discs down. Uh, so, you know, again, same as with the rotary hammers, you want to be considering the inserts that you're using as well. The tool is only as good um, as, the, as the quality of the insert that you put in as well. Um, so that's the angle grinders guys. AG125 is your sight angle grinder. AG4S is your workshop angle grinder. Um, you know, serial applications, longer usage, nice slim grip. I'm just going to see if we've got any questions coming through. Um, what impact nut guns are there please? Terry will come back to you. Any deals on the demo tools you're using? That's a brilliant question. We'll come back to you on that one. Um, and yeah, it's like that's it, question wise, right now. So, um, look, in summary, guys, we wanted to do a bit of a session today to pick out the kind of two or three core categories of tools that we think you guys will use on a daily basis. Yeah? So, we've had a look at the drill drivers. Yeah? Nice and simple. A lot of people mistake these as a kind of, you know, they don't really put too much thought into it or it's just a drill no 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 you know really think about what it is that you're doing choose the right tool for, for your applications yeah sf4 nice and light and compact sf6 bit more power uh, any masonry or concrete drilling uh, with a hammer function we then had a look at the rotaries and uh, we've covered there the difference between the rotaries t2 t4 with the, with the dust removal system uh, t6 the big powerful um, uh, rotary hammer, you know, handle all your kind of anchoring needs. And then finally, guys, the angle grinders um, that we've shown as well. All these on 22 volt, all use the same batteries. Um, please choose the batteries that you guys need um, in terms of your reach requirements. Yeah, you don't always have to have the biggest battery. Um, you know, it's not all about the number. Optimize. Yeah, I guess is the word I'm thinking. Um, so, I mean, realistically, that leaves us towards the end of our time. A couple of other questions we tend to get and have got this week, um, which we thank you for, by the way, is um, tools you'd love to see able to do, yeah? And, um, you know, let's just say we hear you and uh, we're aware um, and, you know, we work hard to bring you innovative products and, um, you know, we can assure you that just as soon as we have something available that we think uh, you would like to see, we will absolutely get that. And get those uh, tools to you. We've had plenty and plenty of innovations over the recent years with our hardest tools and there will be many, many more to come as well. So please watch this space. Um, I noticed a couple of questions about the tools that we've used today uh, have come through. Um, if you are interested in any of the tools that you've seen or any of the tools we do in the range, we've got some links in the chat um, in the comment section that you guys can follow. And if you don't know already, um, please have a look at Hilti's fleet management program. Um, that's maybe a separate video entirely on its own, but that's going to be a, a really simple and quite affordable way for you to kit yourself out of Hilti tools for a monthly fee. So it removes that initial upfront cost in, in a lot of cases. Um, you can build your own kit, number of batteries, number of chargers, and you pay one fee to Hilti, and we will cover all your services. So Hilti will cover the, the um, repairs, the servicing, the warranty, and for the term for the term of that arrangement, and not only that, guys, we'll cover the batteries as well, which is really really important. Theft coverage, labelling, so on and so forth. So please check that out. Reach out to us if you want some more uh, information on that. So that is probably the end of our Hilti live today, guys. Um, we hope you found it enjoyable. Um, we hope this has been useful. Um, Please stay in touch with us, please comment, please um, ask away if you've got any questions and um, we will come back to you if we've not answered them today. 
it's been a pleasure to show you some of our latest tools and we look forward to having you along with us again at some point in the future. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for joining.